Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very accomplished professional from Mumbai, India, Preeti Sridhar. Preeti, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, Preeti is the Chief Executive Officer of the Mariwala Health Initiative. She spearheads the advocacy initiatives where she leads the work on suicide prevention, workplace mental health, and she's on the advisory board for the Global Mental Health Action Network. So Preeti, tell me about your journey and what uh, you know got you interested in the area of health? So I think um, I have had an interesting career so far. I started off in finance, have worked in banking and financial services for 18 years, yeah. uh, India markets, global markets, had been on the business side, then moved to HR. And I resigned on my 40th birthday saying, let's resign and see what life has for me. Uh, I think it was part of my personal journey at that point in time. Uh, because I started doing a psychology course called transactional analysis. Mm -hmm. And it told me I've always been be perfect uh, and, and have a certain way of looking at life. Mm -hmm. um, so I did that. And um, then I explored around me for around five years being in the development sector, worked with uh, multiple NGOs. Um, and then I think MHI happened for me. Nice. Thank you. So tell me about the Mariwala Health Initiative and what are your core objectives? So uh, MHI is a personal philanthropy of Harsh Mariwala. Uh, we work in the space of mental health and suicide prevention. And our objective is to make mental health services accessible to marginalized communities. So it is service delivery that we facilitate through our work and we support through our grant making also. Hmm, interesting. And Preeti, mental health is now being spoken about not just in our country, but all over the world. So for my viewers, viewers and listeners, tell me how do you define the term mental health and why is it crucial in our world today? So we uh, use the WHO definition for mental health, which mm -hmm. says mental health is not absence of illness, mm -hmm. but mental health is ability of an individual to fully contribute to the society or community that they live in mm. and live to their full potential. Uh, I think it's important to talk about mental health in this world when we talk about uh, meritocracy uh, and we talk about resilience. It's important to understand that it's not just an individual's lack of resilience that is mental health issues, mm. but it is the experience of an individual um, based on their identity, based on their socioeconomic positions mm. that impact their mental well-being and that impact how they interact with the world. Very interesting. And yeah, in the current world, it's more important for us to understand others around us. Given all the stress that we are faced with, isn't it? Yes. Well said. And uh, Preeti, what in your view, are some of the common misconceptions about mental health? Because in our country, not too many people are willing to talk about it. It's because we use a very biomedical uh, language of mental health, mm -hmm. right? We talk about mental health as stress. Uh, sorry, we talk about it as depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. But if we move away from that and we look at mental health, as just mental well-being or from a continuum perspective, we look at it from, say, stress, distress, diagnosis, and disability. And we talk in the language of stress and distress. You will find people talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the moment you say depression and anxiety, these are diagnoses that right. people can't talk. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, tell me a little bit about some of the innovative mental health initiatives that uh, MHI has supported. So the way we work is we work in three broad, I would say, verticals. One is grant making, where we give funds to other organizations that are working in mental health. Mm -hmm. 
we do advocacy where we interact with stakeholders. These could be mental health professionals, government, NGOs that are working in the development sector, workplaces, individuals, communities, and try and uh, promote a mental health concept, which is more psychosocial in nature. Mm. And the third work that we do is capacity building. Now, when I look at uh, grant making and we think about what are innovative work that we have supported. So one of our partners, uh, Ishwa Sankalpo, works in Kolkata. Mm -hmm. They work with people living on the street. Um, so one of the work that they do is people living on the street build relationships and contacts with others who do business on the street. Mm -hmm. So your hawkers. And these hawkers do take care of individuals who may have mental health issues and may come around them. So what Ishwa Sankalpo does is they strengthen this relationship between the person living on the street due to mental health issues as well as the hawkers or the shopkeepers mm -hmm. and provide mental health support, which could be medication through after the diagnosis has been done by a relevant person and the client is willing to take these medicines to provide the support to the individuals living on the street. Now that's innovative because you're not saying that every person needs to be in a shelter because not everyone wants to be in a shelter. Right. At the same time, you're building and promoting the community living that India and other Southeast Asian countries may have. Hmm. So that's one of the projects that we fund. Um, the other project that we fund is on farmer suicides. Now, that's a big issue yeah. in a country like India, which is agriculture dominant country. Here, what we do is we have a partner called Shiver Foundation that works in Osmanabad district in Maharashtra, a drought prone district in Maharashtra. Here, what they do is they talk about mental health and suicide prevention in any of the village level or a district level meeting. Right. And when you talk about this subject, somebody or the other will come and tell you, I, I am experiencing this distress mm. or I know somebody who is experiencing a lot of debt and maybe experiencing this distress. Now, what Shiva does is it has a large group of volunteers who are from agriculture colleges. Mm -hmm. And because they are agriculture students, they themselves come from farming background. Mm. Now, what these students will do, there are volunteers for each village will go to a person who has either talked about it themselves or has referred a family that is undergoing a lot of financial distress. Mm. And they'll go and talk to this family and say, we are like your children. Mm. We understand what you're going through. Let's talk about it. Now, most of the concerns of the farmer may be related to some government scheme, access to education, access to agriculture benefits, now, they will then work with the farmer to draft an appropriate letter to the authorities so that they can get their social benefits. Mm. They will then take this letter, give it to the district level collector mm. and say, these are the issues faced by people. Can you resolve it? Mm. The district collector now has a mechanism where there is a coordinator who will work on the issues. Mm. So this is a very creative way of working on an issue where you're working on stressors that are caused due to agriculture right and it's done by somebody who is from the same background so you understand the unique stressors of that occupation mm. well so that's another work that we brought uh, well fund. thank you uh, the other question that i wanted to ask you also was about the pandemic and i've spoken to many people and this is the pandemic had a lot of impact on mental health amongst a lot of people around the world I'd love to get your perspective on how did the COVID-19 pandemic impact medical health, particularly in marginalized communities? Right. So when we talk about marginalized communities, who are these communities? And we, we will need to look at marginalization beyond economic marginalization. Mm. So my marginalization could be because of my gender. So right. it could be women, non-binary persons, mm. trans persons. It could be because of my sexuality. Right which means that I'm not a heterosexual person. Mm -hmm. It could be because of my caste. So I may be a Dalit, 
uh, person, or it could be because of my ethnicity, which is Adivasi person, or uh, it could be because of my ab uh, ability or ableism, mm. which is a disabled person. Mm. So now if you look at what happened during COVID, where there is a scenario that there is an extended period of lockdown, livelihood got impacted. But whose livelihood got impacted? It got impacted of migrant workers. It got impacted of domestic workers. Mm. Now, when your livelihood gets impacted, and I don't know, or I need to think a lot more about my food now, mm. that's a stressor for me. Right. So lack of food impacted mental well-being. Similarly, when you think about education, there were people or schools that were able to move to online education. So who are the students who could not access this education because I don't have a laptop at home or I don't have electricity at home or I don't know how to use it. Or sometimes all of this is there, but my data was not sufficient enough. Mm -hmm. Or there were two siblings trying to study at the same time. So that impacted student community, right? Uh, if you look beyond then uh, when everything was shut down, access to regular medication by people having severe mental health issues mm. or people having HIV, AIDS or TB, that impacted their mental well-being. So healthcare access impacted it. So it was access to basic services mm. or basic right to live that got impacted during COVID for marginalized communities. Mm. Very interesting. And, and we are usually otherwise talking about work from home yeah which is a different conversation hmm. absolutely right and how do you work towards uh, you know uh, you know uh, in, in providing advocacy for legal and policy reforms in mental health so one is let's start that by the time i entered the sector in 2018 india had one of the finest mental health care acts Okay. Because it talked about mental health from a psychosocial lens. It talked about community-based mental health. It talked about the continuum of services. Mm -hmm. It talked about uh, the agency of the person having mental health issues. Mm -hmm. to decide what kind of care and treatment they should have. Mm -hmm. What we needed to work on as a Marivala Health Initiative was implementation of this act. Mm -hmm. Which meant we had to uh, work with the way some of the state governments to say, have you understood the act? Work with the government officials to let them know what the act means. What are their new roles and responsibilities? What's the new approach to mental health care? Because we did away with a very old and archaic uh, law. Mm. So I think that was one thing that we did. Uh, we also, over the last two years, have worked a lot on suicide prevention. Uh, India has uh, more than 1,60,000 deaths by suicide in a year. Uh, there is no conversation about hmm. uh, suicide prevention. If you look at this number, it's almost or more than five times. Okay. So my next question to you, Preeti, is that uh, how does MHI utilize technology to enhance mental health services and outreach? So we are, uh, when when we ask this question, we say people forget that telephone is also a technology. Absolutely right. Right. And I think in this era of uh, smartphones, mm. uh, most of the mental health care, new solutions that are coming are relying on this smartphone. Mm. But we are still a more bigger proponent of using helplines, which are telephone based. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you the difference between the two. Mm. In a helpline, when I call, I can choose not to track who's calling. me. So it, it continues to be anonymous. And of course, the conversation is confidential. Right. The other thing that happens is it's cheap. Right. I can talk um, when nobody is around in the house. And if you look at instead a technology driven, which is smartphone driven uh, or app-based uh, thing, mm. then who has a telephone in the family? Right. It's not the children, it's not the woman. Mm. Second, if you use app-based conversations with uh, either an AI chat box, 
right. or even individual those are ke- are open for men or others elders in the family to have access to right so in a country like india this may or may not work the other thing is how many of us will talk about emotions in english mm-hmm. right i mean we speak english but not many of us mm. we read english again not many of us mm. but even those who read and speak english our vocabulary on emotions is very limited in right right um we we don't have that wide uh, intensity level uh, vocabulary on emotion so i mai aaj theek nahi mehsoos kar rahi hu mujhe aaj dukh mujhe is baat se dukh hua hai ya mai shok mein hu right these are three words to express okay. sadness mm. and we have those terminologies in our local languages mm. uh, for me it's hindi for somebody else it could be marathi or right. tamil um, and we don't just get that words when it's in english so that becomes a limiting factor and of course data while data's reach is there mm. uh it's still an expensive resource to have yeah. in a household well said well said my next question is uh, that how do you and i when i was reading about you you also do a lot of work in training professionals yes how does the mhi work towards building capacity and training professionals in the area of mental health so when we started working on mental health and we started talking about a psychosocial approach to mental health where we are saying mental health is impacted not is not just a psychological issue but also lack of access to social benefits because of who we are we realized that we will need to do advocacy with different stakeholders mental health professionals being one of them mm. we started doing advocacy and then you realize but they are coming back okay i understand what you are doing now how do i get trained to do it so then we said okay now we will need to do training programs that are ecosystem strengthening and are currently not offered by any of our partners whenever we launch it mm. so our first program in that was queer affirmative counseling practices right where we are teaching the mental health professionals that what are the gaps in the psych disciplines their psych disciplines look at mental health from a individual lens and look at it as more irrational thinking or resilience building and how mhi is looking at it saying there are unique stressors that cohorts may experience in case of qsp it was how the lgbtqi a plus community experiences stress because of who they are how their family may or may not ex- accept their realities how the workplaces are not accommodative mm. and when such a client comes to you how do you work with such a client mm. and how do you first understand the issue that they are experiencing so we started off with that and then we realized uh, that there are educational institutes who are saying oh, we want to understand more about gender and sexuality mm. so we started a two hour um, i would say more awareness building uh, program called gender sexuality and mental health from the margins our programs are designed in such a manner the qacp is the design was done by mental health professionals mm. who are from the community mm. and it's uh, being delivered by people from the community right the like i was saying we started talking about suicide prevention and realized again nobody is talking about suicide prevention and when you talk about certain issues um it is unethical to not provide for services should somebody ask Mm-hmm. so when we started talking about suicide prevention we said okay who is going to provide these services right and that time we realized that there are enough and many social workers who are in the development sector mm-hmm. who are working with communities but on different issues but if you are working on education or if you are working on livelihood or if you are working on violence against women all are the all of these are underlying stressors for mental health and suicide mm. so we said can we build social workers capacity to provide crisis intervention 
Okay. So then that's another training that we came out for a different cohort or a stakeholder. Mm. So we have realized we need to keep coming out with Very interesting. Uh, capacity building. Sure. The moment we start engaging with a particular stakeholder. Mm. Fascinating. So please have time for two more questions. My next sure. question is, can you share a success story or a significant impact made by MHI in the field of mental health? I think within MHI, each one of us will have a different answer to the question, mm -hmm. depending on when we joined MHI and what role we are performing. I think uh, for me, when I joined MHI, uh, mental health still was not a topic that you could have conversation on. I had to start all my questions, uh, responses with, what is mental health and why is it important? Mm -hmm. Today, that's not a conversation that we usually start with. So uh, this, the fact that mental health impacts marginalized communities differently, mm -hmm. I think that's a conversation that MHI has pushed for. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing a lot more, at least people talking about mental well-being of marginalized communities. Mm -hmm. Earlier, that was not right conversation that was happening. So personally, I would say that. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably the fact that uh, there are a lot more organizations that we are funding today on mental health than before. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a joke uh, that uh, Raj and I keep saying that Harshad once asked us, Priti, what's the ecosystem of mental health if you were to fund everybody? Mm. And this was in 2018. We had that time five projects that we were funding. And Raj and I really thought, who are the mental health organizations? And we said 20. Mm. Uh, today, we are funding 60 plus projects. Wow. Right. So our own understanding has increased. We are able to find organizations that are led by people from marginalized background that talk about mental health, not necessarily in a diagnostic language of depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. uh, but talk about it from a very local contextual understanding of what mm -hmm. is causing stress to mm -hmm. their communities. Mm -hmm. I think, and, and we are the first institutional funder for them. I think that is the second impact that we are able to actually reach out to marginalized communities and support their journey of providing services. Very interesting. Thank you. And my last question to you, uh, Preeti, given uh, all the understanding you have on mental health uh, and all the work that you're doing through MHI, what is one key message you would like to share with our listeners about mental health? So the WHO says one in four of us will experience mental health issues mm. once in our lifetime. Mm. If that's the case, then as individuals, mm. uh, how are we supporting those who are in need of mental health support? Mm. Within our family, within our friends, within our schools, colleges, mm. workplaces. I think it is important to understand how are we acting as support systems? Because mm. it's not about stigma reduction. Mm. Uh, if they stand up and speak about their mental health issues, mm. are we ready to listen and support them? Mm. Very interesting. And on that note, uh, Preeti, uh, thank you so much for speaking to me about your journey. Thank you for speaking to me about so many different aspects of mental health and the great work Marewala Health Initiative is doing. Thank you also for your powerful message, which is, it's not, you know, one, one in four will have a mental health issue as per AWHO. And therefore, our challenge is how do we support uh, such issues and how do we ensure that there are no stigmas attached to mental health? Thank you for speaking to me and good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. 
You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called you.